All right, in order to state the domain of this expression, what we're going to have to do is factor out both the numerator and denominator and just eliminate any factors that can be eliminated. And whatever's left over should tell us what values of the domain will work and won't work. Uh, again, the main idea with these is to figure out what values of P would give us 0 in the denominator because that gives us an undefined number. Anything divided by 0 is undefined. So P squared minus 4, we're going to split that up using the difference of squares so that we would have a P minus 2 and also a P plus 2. And we'll divide this by factoring a 2P squared plus P minus 10. So if we look at this by grouping, we would break the 1P up into 5P minus 4P. And then after we factored by grouping, we would find that it factors out into 2P plus 5 and a P minus 2. Now after solving these, we would find that P cannot equal negative 5 halves or 2. Again, I do that just by simply making these two terms equal to 0 and then solving for P. So I do that twice and I'd find that P is not negative 5 halves or 2. Now that of itself is a way to write the answer where we have P and it's the set of numbers where P is not equal to negative 5 halves or 2. If we were to write this in interval notation, it would go from negative infinity to a negative 5 halves, and it's not included in the set, union, or it's also from negative 5 halves. So you can see it's not included there to 2, which is also not included and then it would go from 2, which is not included, to a positive infinity. So that is interval notation, and that's our answer in terms of the domain. So there's the two ways we could write the domain in this problem. Now some of you may be asking, well, why didn't we cancel out p minus 2 right here? Uh, that's because if we made, if we went back to the original equation and put 2 in for p, it would still be undefined because it would be dividing by 0, even though the numerator itself also would be 0.